dived into uh, the state from Plato. And actually, inside state, there is a huge part of um, speech about what is justice overall between Socrates and Thrasymachus. And do you know that Thrasymachus is an Istanbulite? He is a really old Istanbulite, and he is from Chalcedon. Now we call Chalcedon as Kadikoy. So he just said that justice is not, nothing other than the advantage of the stronger. So it's all about being centralized, he says. So actually for over 2,500 years, we have been struggling, we have been trying so hard to solve about how we can just distribute these centers, central powers. Especially in the late two centuries, we have been working about how we can distribute the centralized finance. And of course, today we are going to hear about the YDX and what is going on in the YDX overall from Mr. Charles as CEO of the YDX. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Istanbul. It's great to be here. Excellent. So my name is Charles. I'm the CEO of the DYDX Foundation. We have many, many people from the DYDX ecosystem here today. We have got plenty of validators. The full team of the foundation is here. So raise your hand, guys. Make sure you, may, you mingle with them. They're awesome people. And I'm going to share a few, a few updates with you guys today about uh, where is the DYDX protocol heading and, and how much we've been progressing. Um, before we start, uh, a safe harbor. Uh, none of this uh, discussion today is any kind of investment advice, so please do your own research. Uh, with this uh, safe harbor behind, uh, behind us, we can go into, uh, into the, the content of the, uh, of the presentation. We'll go to the next slide, please. Excellent. So we're going to try to know and, and, and discuss together what, where are we now, looking at uh, the DYDX ecosystem, uh, where are we in terms of DYDX chain, as well as um, discussing a little bit the state of the DAO and invite you to join us also in many, many different ways. Uh, so I'll start with maybe a first question is where are we uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of, of internet uh, growth overall? Next slide, please. So if you look at this timeline, it tries to give, give us uh, an update and, and maybe a snapshot on where are we in terms of computing uh, as a society. And you can see that the first computer was started in, uh, in 1969, then Bitcoin came up, Ethereum came up, and then Cosmos came up. And you can, we can definitely feel that this is only the beginning of a very big, very big journey. And it would be interesting for you to kind of reflect on this and try to position within this timeline, where is Facebook? Where is Mongox? Where is Uniswap? Where is FTX? and also maybe having a long line for where is uh, DYDX because I'm very, very optimistic on everything we're building together. On the next slide, please, um, I'd like to share with you a little bit uh, a view we, many of us share is that as a society, we are essentially moving away from a bureaucratic age where centralized entities and institutions are kind of driving many of our activities and, and societies, and we are moving into an algorithm age. And how do we get tools around us uh, to essentially strive within this, uh, this kind of new, new era of uh, digital societies? And I strongly believe that uh, decentralized infrastructures, blockchain obviously, but also decentralized governance via the DAOs are very essential tools for us to strive in this new, this new era. Next slide, please. Uh, moving to this new era of digital societies comes with responsibilities. Uh, there is many of them. I will try just to highlight uh, just a few here. Um, next slide, please. Uh, our first uh, responsibility, in my opinion, is to stay engaged with regulators. Uh, regulators are looking at our space in many different ways. Some of them will be looking at the type of activities we do, but many of them are also looking at what kind of infrastructure we are building. One example, uh, which was uh, recently highlighted by uh, by the BIA, the Bank of, in, uh, of International Settlement, was an experiment made by three different central banks, essentially leveraging DeFi to do some swaps via AMMs for CBDC's networks. So everything we're building is good for our ecosystem, but it's also a responsibility of us to stay engaged with regulators and make them understand what we are building and why we are building it. In my opinion, there is massive overlaps between the mission of regulators and the capabilities of DeFi. 
Um, regulators wants to have healthy and transparent markets. Regulators wants to have uh, protections uh, of, uh, of users in general and users' assets. And all of these features are kind of native in everything we're building. So it's important not only to claim DeFi is good, I think we really need to switch uh, the way we interact with regulators by essentially demonstrating. Demonstrating how DeFi supports uh, many of the missions we share with, uh, with all our societies in general and with regulators as well. On the next slide, I think it's important to keep explaining to everyone we interact with, should it be within our ecosystem, but more importantly, outside of our ecosystem, and keep explaining the difference between money crypto and tech crypto. Obviously, in this room, you are very clear. You know there is some speculators in our space which will sometimes misbehave, and we've seen many examples of that. But there is also, like many of you here today, uh, a lot of people building very meaningful technology which is ve bringing very high impact. So we should keep uh, educating and kind of sharing the wisdom of the difference between money crypto and, uh, and, and tech crypto. One responsibility also, in my opinion, we, we all share, it's about revamping the framing and the wording we use in our industry. Uh, I'm sure there is uh, plenty of engineers and product managers and product leads here. And I just want to take a moment to kind of think of the wording we use whenever we build and, and uh, we build products and technology. We often advertise non-custodial wallets. Uh, so try to explain to your uncle or maybe your grandma, what is a non-custodial wallet? Is it a wallet where, which cannot keep things because it's, it's an, like a, uh, a, a transparent wallet in a way and, and the, the money leaks? So the, word, the choice of wording here can be sometimes a little bit of a, a barrier for, for new entrants. Same for permissionless. Uh, if you tell to the people this is permissionless, for us it means something like there is no need for permi permissions, it, it, it opens the doors to a lot of innovation and new features. But for many people and many new entrants, permissionless means also the kind of far west where there is no rules. So is it the right word we use? I don't think so. Same for immutable, government-free, trustless. Trustless is probably the one which is hardest uh, to capture for, for new entrants in our space. Trustless can be understood as you cannot trust, which is something we understand in a way because we are in this industry for a long time. But for newcomers, trustless means should I trust this? So we have a responsibility, in my opinion, to keep thinking on how we, we design product and how we, we choose and pick words uh, to advertise them. On the next slide, I think that's something which is also very important. We've seen that in CFI multiple times and sometimes in DeFi as well. Making sure that we keep building, and this is something we are very uh, obsessed about uh, at DYDX, is building products with uh, really the, the, the sole focus of supporting and helping the user intentions to essentially exist and, 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 and happen. So that's in the design of the product, making sure that every time we design something, it's kind of reverse engineer from the user intention rather than being a product feature which we need to be educated and possibly misuse later on. Improving user experience, uh, that's something we hear and we hear again for years and years. The same kind of journey happened to, to the normal internet, web one and web two. Uh, that's something we should also stay very resilient about and improving the user experience in general. DYDX has announced uh, a, a partnership a few, uh, a few days ago uh, with Accelar, for example, making sure that users can essentially migrate assets with, uh, with the new DYDX chain in one click only. So making sure you deploy engineering resources and, and mindshare on simplifying the UX to essentially get uh, the, best, uh, the best journey and experience for, for users. The same apply to custody. Yes, there is ledgers, yes, there are, there are smart contracts and, and, and different uh, multi-sig wallets, but it's, we also need to think how we, how we improve this, uh, this experience by another of magnitude to welcome new uh, herds of, of users which will be coming into our space. Uh, we have also a responsibility, and that's something which is uh, very much a focus uh, at the DYDX Foundation and within the DYDX ecosystem overall, about delivering functional DAOs. Uh, our technology is experimental, and within our technology of blockchain, we are, many of us are building DAOs to uh, coordinate some works and projects with, uh, with the community, and it, there is still a long journey to do. So I think it's important to deploy resources again, and making sure that these DAOs evolve as fast as the, as the technology. Unfortunately, humans are not as agile as line of codes, but that's something we should be focused on. Uh, making sure that the DAOs are functional, the DAOs are pragmatic, 
uh, and they essentially serve in a very agile way uh, the, 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 the protocols in general and keep the velocity of the, of the product features, for example, when they, whenever they get to be launched. A few words about the history of DYDX for some of you uh, which, which are not familiar with, uh, uh, with the protocol itself. Uh, DYDX first existed on Ethereum back in 2017. Um, the DYDX engineering team has been very focused and very obsessed by exploring new technology stacks and new, new possible solutions for improving the product experience in, a, in, in general. DYDX was one of the first user and first uh, application to migrate to layer two. And uh, today the version of DYDX you can experience on, on, on Ethereum is actually sitting on StarkX from StarkWare. Um, from this first experiment, it has, it has allowed the, the protocol in general to, to, grow, uh, to grow extremely rapidly. And we celebrated and congratulations to all of you involved in, a, in the project overall, one trillion with a T, one trillion dollar of volume uh, accumulated since inception. So that's a very, very big milestone. That's awesome, yes. Uh, clap your hands for yourselves, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's really a testament for many of the works from engineers, from people involved, uh, from the market, the feedback loop, uh, which has been able to be really uh, kind of productive and positive in, in improving the, the protocol overall. And what's next? Uh, I think you've heard about that and we are extremely excited. Uh, we are moving uh, following some governance vote by the community to the new DYDX chain. So it's going to come in a few, a few weeks' time. Uh, the DYDX chain is built on Cosmos SDK. Uh, it's a customized uh, chain for the specific use case of DYDX. Uh, if some of you have participated or experienced the testnet, you can see that this is just a totally revamped experience and a very solid kind of foundation uh, from a tech perspective uh, for, for the future of DYDX. We celebrated one trillion. We can clap hands again, why not? <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Next slide, please. So why, why, why the DYD exchange is being built? Uh, why the community and engineers involved are deciding to essentially build this, this new stack from the ground up and, and spend so many months on this? Uh, the, first, uh, the first reason is really keep progressing into the, the roadmap of decentralization of DYDX. DYDX have, uh, exists exist since 2017, has been obsessed with a roadmap of decentralization, but there is, depending on which stack and, and whenever you start it, there is only so much you can achieve in, uh, in terms of decentralization. But the, uh, I will say the, the, the mission remains the same, and whenever there is opportunities to decentralize further, these opportunities are explored and eventually executed on. So one of the reasons the YDX chain will, will come to birth is to essentially keep progressing in decentralization, decentralizing the matching engine, decentralizing the order book, and decentralizing the, the sequencer when the time comes. So it's really a long, uh, a long, uh, long time and long-term type, uh, type of, uh, of timeline in looking at how do we decentralize. Same for the DAOs. Um, the DAOs exist today on the Ethereum version of DYDX, but they will be, uh, I will say, uh, enabled and, and kind of empowered further with, uh, with the birth of the DYDX chain. So making sure that there is no central parties. And one thing you might have read uh, already is that all the fees collected by the protocol will be distributed to validators and to stakers. That's also a great progress in terms of enabling the community and the treasuries to further empower by uh, innovation and, and, and new features uh, the ecosystem overall. The new chain also will provide higher uh, order, order capacity, uh, in a sense more throughput to feed the growth of the protocol. Uh, when you reach $1 trillion of volume, it means you've got essentially a lot of users, and these users need to be accommodated from a technology perspective. The finality of the trades also will come much faster, as well as um, kind of building the base for uh, new product features. Uh, so you, we will see what the, what the community decides to, but there is, a, there is a, a lot of additional synthetic products or additional features in margins which can be deployed as well with the, with the new DYD exchange. So stay tuned, be, beyond the launch, there is a, a lot of work which already started and, and that's also very exciting. A few statistics about the version three uh, of DYDX, which uh, sits on Ethereum, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so daily average volume so far in 2023, about $940 million daily. 
So that's clearly a, a strong signal of, of product market fees. A total volume so far of 258 million. Some fees are being collected by the platform and 66K plus uh, traders uh, on, on DYDX. So this makes us very excited to be able to provide to the, to the protocol itself some kind of upgrade uh, on this totally new stack that will be the, the DYDX chain. We'd like to thank also all the people which have been involved in, in this journey of the DYDX chain. Uh, DYDX went through a number of test nets, some of them internal, some of them external. We are at the third version iteration of the, the public test net. Uh, we put a few logos here, but there is 50 plus uh, different validators which have been testing, pushing the boundaries, uh, creating all kinds of scenarios to make sure that the DYD action is ready uh, when the time comes. So, uh, so far, the engineers report about 1.6 second block time. 58 validators uh, have been involved in the testnet and uh, a number of tokens and transactions uh, which also demonstrate that there is definitely the performance are there and this is very, very encouraging. For the technical or maybe the DeFi guy in the room, I will go quickly through uh, the kind of journey an order goes uh, through, uh, through the protocol. So before, before go going through this, uh, this process of an order, I just want to highlight three main components of the DYD exchange uh, from the, the blockchain itself up to the application. So there is obviously the protocol, uh, which is built on the top of Comet F uh, BFT, as well as uh, the Cosmos SDK. And there is two types of, uh, of nodes, validators as well as full nodes. Uh, so validators have two missions on the DYD exchange. Number one mission is to verify and mint new blocks. So uh, essentially uh, maintaining, uh, maintaining the chain itself, but they also host in the memory of the validators, which is not the hard drive, but really the memory itself, which is much more uh, veloce in terms of, uh, of, of response time. They host uh, a copy of the order book and they keep whispering to each other the latest version of the order book. So that's the, uh, the kind of uh, engineering decision which was made to decentralize the order book. So the order book is not sitting into a centralized server anymore without having the order book sitting on chain. If your order book was to, to be seated on chain, it would have like 1.6 1, 1. seconds kind of uh, uh, block time, and this will be uh, a latency which is really suboptimal uh, for an order book type of, uh, of protocol. So that's really the, the design which has been, uh, which has been made and, uh, and tested in testnet and, and soon uh, within, uh, within the DYD exchange when it will be launched. There is obviously uh, indexers which are collecting information and more, uh, more kind of Web2 services for the, for the protocol and, and, and stakeholders overall, as well as, well as front-ends. So front-ends for, uh, for the web, front-ends for mobile, and there is also a very important component for high-frequency traders, uh, which are using DYDX, is a, a set of APIs which allows them to do systematic trading uh, at high frequency, uh, as, a, as a protocol will require. Moving on to the order, uh, when an order is placed uh, on the DYDX uh, protocol and DYDX exchange, uh, it can be done via the front end or via an API. So that's, that's number one. Then this, uh, this order will be routed to a validator. The validator will gossip the transactions and eventually the order uh, of the buyer and the seller will meet. So there will be a hit. Uh, when this hit between the, the buyer and the seller happen, it moves to the consensus uh, type of, uh, of process where the validator will submit uh, to the blockchain itself and to the validators uh, a pre-confirmation of the order. And the validators essentially will, need, will be in charge of checking within all the, the network of validators if there is a delay in the order. So maybe if I hit the order at 1.1 second and you hit the order at one second, uh, the validators at the consensus level will essentially do some kind of triage and cancel my orders or not validate my orders and validating your order which was, which was hit before, before mine. After the block is committed, uh, then the chain is totally updated and the data is streamed to the full nodes as well as the indexers for updating essentially every one uh, part, part of the chain. One of the new excited, exciting features of the DYDX chain is uh, the upcoming permissionless market. So this is not going to happen immediately. The chain has to stabilize and being more, more efficient and, 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 and really, uh, really stable to welcome some, some kind of uh, application level upgrade. But one of, the, one of the potential of the permissionless market will be to create uh, a much larger uh, number of trading pairs, which is a very big, very big demand from the market overall, but also giving away the kind of 
the, the formula for people to express their innovations, uh, to express their market needs, and being able to uh, launch on DYDX within a framework of risk management, within a framework of liquidity requirements, which will be defined by the community, some new markets. So there will be more, uh, more, more crypto trading pairs, that's exciting. What is more exciting to me is really to get, uh, I would say, the grand open for much more contributors uh, with a very good and strong financial background to really innovate uh, with the launch of new products and leveraging essentially the infrastructure of the YDX ecosystem, but also the, the permissionless feature. So as a nutshell, DYDX is becoming uh, a protocol. It's an application becoming a protocol. And that's, some, that's a trend we see, uh, and we will see more and more, I believe. So possibly uh, people will get inspired and inspire themselves from DYDX, and we look forward to share with you our journey so everyone can learn from, uh, from this journey of being an application, a leading application in our space, uh, and becoming a protocol uh, as, a, as a DYDX chain. The YDX uh, ecosystem is also rich of DAOs. So there is two active DAOs today within the YDX ecosystem. The Grants DAO, uh, which, uh, which evolved into the 1.5 type of, uh, of generation, as well as the Operation Sub DAO. Uh, some of the, uh, the members of the Operation Sub DAO are here also, so you might, you might meet them later this week. Um, and they are running some, some, uh, some important infrastructure for uh, the, the ecosystem of validators overall. And the history, the community uh, uh, inputs and, and votes will also probably uh, enable uh, additional DAOs when the, time, uh, when the time comes. There is discussions about potential risk and analytics DAOs, R&D, treasury management and growth. So we will find out soon enough. If you want to know more about DYDX, you want to scan this QR code. This is a semi-annual report published by the DYDX Foundation. It gives you a very good snapshot of numbers, who is involved in the, in the DYDX chain build, and that's a very good way for you to kind of catch up on, on everything here. I'll conclude very soon. So, as a takeaway, uh, the software of DYDX is totally open source, or will be in the coming weeks, uh, from, the, source, from, the, from the, the code itself to the user interface. Uh, there is an easy onboarding which has been already tested during the testnet, so that's exciting. There will be independent indexes, uh, indexing services providers involved as well. And there is a novel uh, MEV solution which you want to keep an eye on. It will evolve with a, with a chain being in production, but that's, uh, that's something we, uh, we all pay uh, attention to. Some takeaways, an application becoming a protocol. We are migrating to our own chain uh, built out of the Cosmos SDK. Uh, the community is leading all these efforts, so you can be part of this community. I'll touch on this in one second. And the DAO ecosystem around DYDX is progressing uh, very strongly and, and definitely leads the charge in, in our space. Istanbul by blockchain equal love. Sorry, the emoji is missing here as a PDF story. So join, join the DYDX ecosystem. It's obviously a permissionless ecosystem. You can join as a contributor in the DAOs. You can join as uh, additional validators. You can join as service providers of infrastructure, uh, but also doing some, res some research around uh, the many topics uh, the ecosystem is touching overall. Uh, so you're very, very much welcome thinking of additional tooling uh, on, on Cosmos, some various strategies the community could be exploring. Uh, building bridges, contributing to governance, connecting wallets. There is multiple topics and multiple ways we can collaborate. Uh, so please uh, be in touch. There is many of us wearing this black uh, DYDX t-shirt, so feel free to, to reach out to us. My last slide, and I know I'm a little bit late, sorry about that. Uh, it's essentially a call for action. So if you want to start your journey within DYDX on the next, next slide, uh, you can follow us on the DYDX Foundation. This is really where we, we kind of aggregate all the activities, the news, the progress, the updates from the ecosystem, and also join the DYDX forum, open an account so you're going you're gonna to receive uh, regular updates, and it's the best way for you to, uh, to join us in this uh, exciting journey. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to spending the week with you guys here in Istanbul. Thank you. Thank you.